Let's look at the hair material. The hair material gives us a lot of control over the hair after we've done our styling and it works in conjunction with all the settings that we've already had a look at for the styling itself. The hair styling in this particular case for the hair material is specifically for the hair, not the guides. So the first thing that I would normally do is I would normally change the color and the thickness. So let's have a look at the thickness to start with. We've got the root and we've got the tip thickness. I'm going to put this to 0.4. I'm going to go the tip. We'll stick with 0.1 for now. Now the curve, I want to have a thick starting and a nice fall off down here somewhere. And let's go for a quick render. Okay, that's not bad. I'm going to bring down the roots a little bit thinner. Let's go 0.3. I'm going to adjust this curve here. And in the curve, little tiny arrow here, we can expand this and change it to a different type, a spline curve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of a bounce up. So it starts off quite thin and then it goes a little bit thicker and then it works its way to total thinness down the bottom here. Let's have a look at that. Okay, that's quite nice, it's nice and fluffy. The good thing about this is we can have multiple uh, materials per hair object. So we don't obviously have to have the same color and the same settings, which is very, very good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna concentrate on just one of these parts of the hair. So I'm gonna go for just the base for the moment here. Now I want the hair here to be a little bit more frizzed up. So I'm gonna select the frizz and you notice that the frizz on the hair is kind of throwing it all over the place. I want it to be so that the frizz really is showing more at the roots. So I'm going to move this curve to be affecting the roots and move this curve for the tips to not be affecting the ends. And then the closer we move this to there, the more further up the hair it's going to have less effect. So you could say that from left to right is left is the root, right is the tips, and along this is along the actual um, curve length. So if I say, for instance, put this here, the minimal effect on the tips is gonna be applied really starting from about halfway down the overall length of the curve or the hair. This is basically how it works. So we just bring it to there. Now we've got the frizz percentage in the X and the Y. So when we move to a different angle, we're gonna have the frizz moving out. Say for instance, that we bring this down, okay? You'll see it makes a difference on the X because obviously that's the width. Side to side is our X. Bring this up and you see this. And for the Y, let's move to the side here. You can see this. And now we can start to control between the two how much frizz we want. Positionally, anyway. Okay, and variation, we can take this down a little bit. And the total power of the frizz, bring this down. Let's go for a quick render. Okay, that's quite nice. At the moment, the tips they're a little bit too too refined obviously we use the clump on the guides itself so that's going to have an effect on it so what we can do here, here <coughs> excuse me is just increase just here i'm going to press the control key pull it down and we want to change the interpolation to spline And we can get some all sorts of nice effects like this. So let's just go for a quick render. You'll see what I've just done there. It 
It's going to have a tightness a little bit. It's not probably apparent here too much, but it's going to have a bit of tightness just towards the end there. And that's basically what we're doing. We're loosening it up and then we're tightening it back up again. And that's what we can do with these curves. We create a bit of a variation there, which is very, very handy to be able to do. Okay, that's quite nice. Um, and I'll stick to that. The good thing is, is you can change the interpolation per knot. So for instance, on here, we've got a spline. On here, we've got the cubic. We can turn this to a spline. Total control. Let's just smooth that out a little bit, I think. Okay, that's great. Um, what about the length? At the moment, the length is, it tends to be quite even, really. It's not really got much variation in the length. So what I like to do is I like to use the scale for this, not the actual length parameter. The scale tends to work better. So I'm going to create a variation. So I'm going to say 80% of it is going to be true to the length. And 20% of it is not going to be, basically, in the variation of it. Now, if I set it to 100%, it means some of those hairs will be 100% is original length. And 20% of those are going to be shorter. And then when we go for a render, it's going to look a little bit more better. And there we go. That was before and that was after. It looks much more natural now. Um, another thing that obviously you, you would want to change would be like the kink. Kink works similar as frizz, but it can kind of have a more of a wavy, fuzzy effect to it. Again, this is something that you may want to just play with. In this particular case, I may want to break down just the tips a little bit more with the kink. Don't allow it too fluffy, but you can certainly affect it there that's pretty nice um, the clumping the clumping is a little bit more complex than the clumping that we use for the guides in that we can choose how much of the percentage of the of the overall amount of hairs we got is going to affect or basically pull together so for instance um, if we bring this down quite low it means that basically 2% of the hair count is going to be basically the attracting hairs. It's going to pull it to, to the point. And then we increase the clump to 100%. And the radius is how far the radius is going to actually have that effect. So let's just bring this down. You can see here the effects. And when we increase this count, it's going to try to split the hairs more and more. Now on the clumping side here, if I click on include roots, and I increase the limit, it's going to affect the hair differently because of the amount of total hairs that we've got. Something that you've got to really play with, look in the manual, it explains it a bit more better than what I'm able to explain it because it's, it's, it's a little bit complex to start with, but it does make sense once you kind of get to grips with it. So really that's the clumping. And again, increasing this distance will only have an effect on the other parameters. So if I, for instance, put this quite high, 10%, and change the radius, this is going to have an effect. And it's normally quite low, I'd have this, 0 0.5, something like that. Of course, we've got all the control. So, for instance, I want no clumping at the root. I want all the clumping happening at the tip. And the fall off in a very similar fashion. And let's just refine this a bit, I think. Okay. 
And the really good thing is, is that if there's only a feature or function within Cinema 4D, you can simply right click on it and then go to show help. And then what it will do is it will bring the manual up and it will bring it up and just tell you about that particular um, feature and how you can control it. In this particular case, it's talking about the, the clumping. You can see there that the clumping, you can create some really nice effects with the clumping. It's all in the manual and the manual is very, very clear by the way, in the way it explains things. <clears throat> so that's the clumping. I'm going to just take this off for the minute. Let's go to color. <clears throat> color variation is very, very important. We can work from the <coughs> tip or the root to the tip and the brightness will actually be the overall brightness of the color. We can also have a varying variation between the hue, saturation and the value. And that's just increase the saturation a little bit. Increase the value. We'll take this right up there quite high. The hue you won't want to change too much because it can introduce some odd colors. And let's just go for a quick render and you'll see that we've got a bit more hair tone within there. Let's go between the two. You can see here we've got a bit more variation in color, which is nice. Now this hair thickness, I'm still not totally happy with. And let's have a look and see what that looks like. Ah, that's better. Now the next thing I want to show you is the specular. The specular is very, very important, obviously. And the best way to set up your specular is when you've got some lights in the scene. At the moment, it's just using a global light. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring a light in there, just a basic light. I'm just going to pull this out and up. I'm going to talk about light a little bit more in a minute. I'm just going to hold down the control key and duplicate this light and then bring this to the back as well. So I can show you another feature in a minute with lights and the shader. Okay, so let's go back in there now. The really good thing is, is when you're working on the hair like this, you can get some really quick feedback and that's really really nice to be able to do that get really quick feedback and you can go back to the um, editor and you can start to work on um, our shader and material so the first thing i like to do is take off the secondary strength and then i like to work with just the primary strength now the sharpness i tend to like to bring up so you've got more sharper hit on the uh, on the surface of the hair Bit more tighter you may be getting some kinking going on here from the settings that we set um, I did create some possibly strange where was it it was the scale possibly I'd done it in see some of these strange curves so this might have had a little bit of a, a, a drastic effect on the way that the specular is hitting the surface Okay, so we're, we're tightening this up a little bit more, I think. Okay. Okay, we can work with that. So back to the specular again. We've got the color. Because we're dealing with blonde hair at the moment, I'm going to give it a little bit of a tint. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the secondary and go to the texture and then select color you can actually use other things than just color for instance you can use a, a Fresnel effect so that it depends on the angle and it pushes it, it kind of pushes the the color tint towards the outside I'm going to use just a normal color I'm going to pick an obscure color like green this is so that we can really see what's going on so that's just um, we go to the render we go to the interactive render region 
and uh, we're only looking at the color at the moment we bring this quality down Just wait for that for the moment to update. It may just be the case that it's quicker to work with just rendering it. Let's just try this. We're going to increase the strength and we're going to start to see a green tint from the secondary specular. Now what this tint is showing us is basically how wide the tint is and how close it is to the primary tint and by increasing the sharpness we can bring this and tone this down more closer to the original tint see here it's not having such a wide effect overall let's increase that a little bit more and now I'm going to change this color to a slightly bronzy color which kind of gives us a more of a tone variation with the tint which gives us a much more nice looking hair just take it a little bit lighter I think and we'll take that sharpness down a little bit and the strength down a little bit that's quite nice gives us a bit of variation in there between before and afterwards there and there you see that it is a little bit too heavy for the strength at the moment to take that down a little bit just gives you an idea what you can do there obviously you've got all of these down here um, the clump Titan displace these are all things you just want to have a little play with and see what you can do. But just remember that you have a lot of control over these. You can control the effect it has in the direction, the X and the Y, the variation, how many percentage of waves that it's got in it. And obviously you can control where on the guide itself it's actually going to be affected. So for instance, whether it's going to affect more towards the roots or the tips. So these are all things that you can do within the, um, the material, you've got a lot of control overall. So finally, what I'm gonna be looking at next is back to the color, and we're gonna to go to tint, and this is where we can actually add a tint based upon the percentage of the overall hairs. So I'm gonna select a color. I'm gonna go for something that we can really see in this particular case. And 10% of the hairs is gonna receive this tint. Let's just go for a render. You can see in there now, we get a nice little bit of variation of the tint of that orange coming over 10% of the hairs. And that's pretty nice to be able to do that. So to change the density, there's several ways that we can do this. We can change the density overall. So let's have a look here. We're gonna go back to our hair and I did touch on this briefly earlier on. we we'll just close these down. We've got the number of hairs. I'm going to change this to say 10,000. Keep in mind that when you've got the editor display set to hairlines that you, you may want to have this quite low as you increase the hair guides because it can slow your system down greatly. So I've gone to the count of 10,000 hairs and for the cloning, I'm still set to two. That's gonna give us quite a bit of hairs. Let's go for a quick render. In theory, if the cloning is working on the basis it's duplicating the amount of hairs, in theory that we've got 30,000 hairs right now. This in turn means that I can go back into the thickness if I want it to be a little bit more refined. and have it a little bit more silky and smooth towards the roots. There we go. It's 
it's rendering pretty quick as well. So now that we've got that, I'm just going to just show you one more thing in here, and that is the back light color. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to turn this to a completely different color so we can see this. Go for a render. And what you'll find is, is when we've got this turned on, it will actually show a color from the back pushed through to the front. And this is going to give us a really nice effect when we get the right color. It's going to basically give us a nice little glow around just behind the back of the um, color. So let's just go in there and change this to a, a lighter tint of yellow. You can see here it's just pushing through there. I'm going to bring the mix strength down. Give it a bit more of a ready sort of like tinge to it. More towards the pink. That should be quite nice. There's obviously many, many more settings. This is really more of an overview. And I've probably gone too deep already. But just to remember that you can have multiple hair objects. You can style them individually and you can make them have their own individual materials. You can simply copy this material anytime and make adjustments and apply it step separately to a different one. So for instance, if I just press the control key, drag and drop, I've now got the hair object number two. I can drag this over the, the second hair. Oh, I think that's that one there. And then we can just go in there and to start to edit things in there to just change things up a little bit, maybe the color variation. So we can maybe change this to be a bit darker there. Take it black there. We can give it a different variation in saturation and in value. Um, I'm going to sort of push it a little bit to the extremes a little bit just so we can really see what's going on here. And then we go for a render. And the good thing about applying it in this way, it means that most of the settings that you've already set up can be applied to another layer of hair. And then you can make those adjustments to that instead of having to start from scratch. And you can clearly see that we've got two lots of hair and they really are merging in nicely with each other now. Um, all but you can see that they're kind of coming from a very strange area of the roots on the particular object that I'm working with. But you can really see how it works there. And of course, um, I would normally have one of at least one of the objects to to have clump in. So for instance, let's just select this object here. We go to our interpolation. We set the clump in to be much more harsh. Towards the tips. Take a bit of this frizz off and kink. We can do a little bit of clumping in here if we want. You can choose just how far you push it, but of course it's going to have the overall effect of having some hair loose, some hair clumped, and have them mixed between the two. And in the opening screen of the video tutorial, you can see an example of this where I've, I've applied some hair as a base layer as a clump layer and as a frizz layer all separately but i'm hoping what you can get from this is just how versatile the hair system is within cinema 4d and just how little you have to do to get a hairstyle albeit in this particular case it's only a demonstration so it's not really showing off the best of its quality obviously obviously you've got um, other settings in the rendering that you can adjust as well now at the moment I'm just going to finish with one last thing which is very important and that is by default your lights that you add into the scene don't have any shadows. By turning the shadows on, say for area, the shadows are going to be cast on here from the hair 
not that great if I'm completely honest with you. To get around that problem you can select both of the the lights, right click, go to the hair tag and then select the light tag for the light. With those selected we can now select a shadow map I'll go for 750 by 750 and we can control with this sample size how tight we want the shadows or how blurry we want them and this is going to give us a much better effect and when I go for a render now it's going to take a little bit longer because we're dealing with shadows but it will certainly give the hair a more realistic look because then we're going to be dealing with shadows the hair will cast shadows on themselves and the object in which the hair is grown from we'll just give it a moment there to update and then it'll start to render through this now the hair has much more depth to it and the specular is really showing out much more clearer now there we go that only took 45 seconds so that's not bad at all and um, I found that it's quite acceptable you know I'm using this recording software this screen recording software Camtasia that's pulling my system down a little bit I've also got Photoshop open in the background as well and many web pages so I'd say that Cinema 4D is doing very well in rendering hair considering we've got what um, 60,000 hairs I'd say between the two objects 55 60,000 hairs that's not bad going and I've rendered out 250,000 hairs no problem at all um, absolutely no problem and what this basically does is it enables you to be able to apply animation and dynamics it makes it feasible so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish off just by applying the dynamics I'm going to render out an animation and then I'll show you this at the end of the video and just to show you the settings that I'm going to go for I'm going to stick at the 800 by 600 that is absolutely fine for my usage standard render is fine as well um, I'm not going to apply any motion blur or anything like that although it does look very good but it will increase render times um, on the hair rendering I'm going to change it from vertex to pixel I can't remember which of them is better if I just right click and just go into my manual it will basically tell me pixels each pixel counted is really the method delivered better results so there we go we turn it to pixels it's going to give us better results there we go it's that quick to find something in the manual um, the output I'm going to choose all frames from 0 to 300 I'm going to make sure that I save it to a certain destination, which I'll set in a minute. Um, the format, I'm going to just render out as a QuickTime movie. If you're going to be composite in your final um, image, go for a PNG or something like that, not into a movie. If your render fails for some reason during your animation, then you've lost it. At least you can pick up the image sequence from where you um, it crashed or whether there was a problem. In my case it's normally not crashing it's normally power cups and stuff like that so i'm going to go to the options there i'm going to h264 it's got a nice compression make sure that the frame rate is the set the same as your project's um, frame rate and as for, for the animation so your project settings you can see it sets to 30 frames per second so i'm just going to leave it at that and then when i come back um, you're going to see this short animation with the wind blowing this small amount of hair 